Welcome to a new week. We are reviewing Long Division by popular request. We made another copy of Jamboard 22. We did the warm up with the running out of gas problem. We did a little demonstration of dealing out cards. We did a long division problem. And now we're saying, how do those things relate? The long division and the dealing out cards. So it's my turn to be active. Thank you again for everyone that's been moving cards and writing things and so on. Uh, now you get to fall asleep and just watch me, but don't fall asleep. So I want to write this two and this eight. This isn't a two. It sure looks like a two, but it's lying to me. What number is that really? 200. 200, right? This is a 100s column. I want to give myself 972 things before. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two. Now I have my 972. Let me draw my table again. Somebody can color it if they care. So when this two is up here, it's saying we're in the hundreds column and I've dealt out 200 to my four people. So let's actually do that. 100 to you, 100 to you, 100 to you, 100 to you. And then a second hundred. So now we've caught up in the picture to the long division. Everyone with me so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So instead of writing our green arrow for bringing down the seven, I'm going to write out what we really did, which is we got rid of 800 cards. Let's write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 800 cards are not in our hand anymore. They're on the table. Everyone okay with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. So why am I subtracting? That was a great segue. Thank you again for asking. It's because in my hand, I've taken away 800 cards. They're now down here instead. That makes so much sense. <laughs> So what do I have left? 172 cards in my hand. Everyone see the 172 cards? Mm -hmm. So just like before, if you were here a moment ago, sorry if you are only watching the recording, I've done the hundreds, now it's time to do the tens. So I want to deal out 10 cards to everyone. How many times can I do that in the tens column? Well. You could look at this as four goes into 17. That's how we saw it before. We could also just act it out. You get a 10, oops. You get a 10, you get a 10, you get a 10, there's one. You get a 10, you get a 10, you get a 10. Up player four needs a 10, but we're out. What can we do? Why don't we break apart one of these tens and make change for this hundred? So this hundred goes away. Bye bye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we can finish going around. And we go around again. A third ten to everyone. A fourth ten to everyone. So how many tens did I give to each person? Four. Wait, right, one, two, three, four. I did it one at a time, four times. That's not how we write it. That's kind of dopey. So what we really write is this four. We gave everybody four tens. So if I have four tens to four people, that's 160 cards went away. And now I'm down to 12 in my hand. Everyone see the 12? Mm -hmm. So now we're down to ones. I want to go around one at a time. I have two cards. I can't even go around once, but I can break up this 10 that I still have. So let's do that. Goodbye 10. We're taking you somewhere like a cash register and getting change, but it's cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now you get a one, 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 you get a one. You get a one, you get a one, you get a one. So I went around three times. That got rid of my 12 cards. 
So at this point, if you haven't seen it with the zeros before, then you want to go back and stare at this. If you were taught to bring down the numbers, then it's hiding the fact that there's the zeros here. It's making this look like an eight, but it's not an eight, it's an 800. It's making this look like 17, but it's not 17, it's 170 and so on. So it makes it harder to understand. If you didn't understand why long division works before now, that it was actually dealing out cards, that's not your fault. That's because someone didn't teach it to you right long ago. Okay, I have another question. Sure. So, like, doing it on paper without the cards for the example, how would you, like, put four into two? Like, how would you do that and end up with three? How would I do that? Let's just make up one. So, give me first any number you want, maybe something small, like 10 or less. What four. you asking me? Four. Okay, four. And then give me some big number, like more than 100. Can you make the screen a little bit bigger? Yeah, but you know, I this I can a little bit, but I'm just inventing something that will come out without a remainder. So okay. Is, 700. 700. <laughs> uh, that's going to be pretty boring. Why don't we do, why don't I roll? 673. 673. <laughs> okay, so I want... 2692 divided by four. So let's do that. I will make a new blank page. And what was it? 2692 divided by four. So you want to see the zero method with a brand new problem. I'm gonna space it out. Um, and in fact, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do it twice, once each way. First, let's do it with the zero method since you asked, and then I'll do it with the down method. So does four go into two? In other words, I'm saying I want to deal out cards a thousand at a time. If I have 2,000 something cards, can I get four people a stack of a thousand each? No, oh, no. I need at least 4,000 cards to do that. And I only have mm -hmm. 2,000 cards and change. So I'm not going to have anything in this place value. Can I deal out cards a hundred at a time? Sure. So how many times can I give 100 cards to four people? Let me go and grab my times tables. So I want something that looks sort of like 26. So here we go, 24. I can do six times. So 600 times four, six times four is 24. And then we put the two zeros at the end. Are you with me so far with that? Kind no. Of. <laughs> so if I want to multiply 600 by four, then the shortcut is I take the two zeros and I am going to like put them off on the side somewhere. They are like, in a bank being safe. And then I multiply the six times four and I get 24. And then I take my two zeros and I put them back. Have you seen that shortcut before for multiplying when there's zeros at the end? No, okay. Should I talk about the shortcut more? I don't understand, like, what's the, like, how, why do we multiply? Why do we multiply? Okay, let's go back and look at this. So when we had the 972 cards up here in our hand, mm -hmm. and we gave 200, this is the 200 to everybody, that was just like 200 here, 200 here, 
There was 200 buried in there, the 200 here. So we got to be 800 because there's two for you, that's one 200. There's two for this person, that's two 200s. And there's 200s down in that pile, that's three 200s. And then there's a 200 for player four, that's four 200s. So four okay. 200s was 800. Gotcha. So this is the same thing. We're giving out 600 cards to four people. So 600 for one person is 600. 600 for another person brings us up to 200. 600 for another person brings us up to 1,800. And 600 for the last person brings us up to 2,400. OK, I see now. All good questions. Thank you for all those questions. Okay, but I do have to erase just for space on my screen. What if it's like a super big number, like twenty-seven going into thirty thousand two hundred something? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it'll how be the same like... process. Do you want a two-digit number in front? Is the fact that well, yeah, because it was just yeah, because I was trying to go through like the division little you know, my quiz thingy, whatever thing. And mm -hmm. I was trying to like do it on my own on the paper and do the long division, but I was getting stuck when it was like 27 going into like 300 something. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's, there's pros and cons. If I could certainly show you that. It'll be harder to understand the kind of things we just talked about of why this process is working if the numbers are big. I guess that's true. I'm trying to use numbers that are big enough in some places to be a little scary because it feels good to understand scary things, but I also want it that we can kind of see what's happening. The other thing sense. is as far as I know, and since Anna's here, maybe she can correct me, I'm pretty sure the GED doesn't ask you to do long division by hand. So Sweet. you can Thank use a calculator for, for this. You have to understand kind of the idea that mm -hmm. is making piles of the same size or how many times can $5.15 fit into my total amount of my wallet. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think you actually have to do this because it takes a long time and it would take a long class time and it would take a lot of time in your GED hour. Um, okay. So the reason we're talking about this is so you're understanding how division is like dealing out cards um, and we also want you to just feel smart because, again, if no one has explained this to you before and you've spent your whole life knowing how to do long division, but like, why does it work anyway? Why does repeatedly multiplying and subtracting make equal size piles if that's what division is supposed to be? Um, then you are smart enough to understand this. And it's just no one had taught it clearly before. And long division is pretty complicated, right? If you can understand how long division works, either right now or after a little more review, then there's nothing on the GED that your brain can't handle. This is about the most complicated a math process gets. Um, but there's, you know, so it, it's sort of a good check mark that, you know, my brain can handle this. There might be some things in algebra that I've never been taught before that will be new to me before I take the GED things I see in math C and D, maybe even E, if you wait that long before taking it. Um, but if you can understand something as tricky as long division, then you are up for it. It's just time and work. Yeah, I was always taught like how to do the formula and everything, but I was never taught like why it worked. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunately probably because your math teacher was never taught why it works and their math teacher was never taught why it works and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and there is some interesting history to that, that this isn't really a history class. Um, but yeah, that's... Anyway, now you can break the mold. You are the people that can talk to your friends or kids or whatever and explain why these things work. Okay, should we finish up? Yeah. Okay, so we've dealt out 2,400 cards, 600, 1,200, 1,800, 2,400. So we'll actually do our subtraction. And in our hand, we have 
292 cards left. So now I want to deal out 10 at a time. So if I deal out 10 cards, that's going to be 40. Then I go around again. I've dealt out 80 cards. This is to the whole table, right? 10 to four people, another 10 to four people. And I keep going like that. How many times am I going to go around the table to be something like 292? Which of these numbers looks right? Well, wouldn't you try to find out how many times it goes into 29? Yeah. And it would be seven because that's closest seven. to 20. So these zeros are like placeholders. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to write them zero, small. I'm going around seven times in the tens column. I'm giving out 70 cards to each person. So 70 cards to four people is going to be 280 cards being passed out. Again, seven times four is 28. And the zero kind of just floats around and goes at the end for that multiplication shortcut. Wait, so how did we get seven again? How did we get seven? I looked at this 29 and we saw 28 fits almost to 29 and that was seven. Okay. I could also just count. I could say I went around the table once, 10, 10, 10, 10, that's 40. I go around the table again, 10, 10, 10, 10, now we're up to 80. Again, 10, 10, 10, 10, now we're up to 120. 10, 10, 10, 10, now we're up to 160. 10, 10, 10, 10, now we're up to 200. 10, 10, 10, 10, now we're up to 240. 10, 10, 10, 10, now I've used up 280. And if I go around more than that, I'm going to need 40 cards, and I don't have 40 more cards than that. I see. And if I hide these zeros, uh, which I can't do with the rectangle, one moment, I need this kind of rectangle. Nope, that doesn't hide it either. Never mind. Um, imagine that we're covering up these zeros. Then we have the same numbers here that we do here. See how those match? Mm -hmm. it's just that now we're counting by ones and now we're counting by tens. Okay, so I have 12 cards left in my hand. And we need to deal out more. So I will say I'm going to give everyone three cards. And three times four is 12, and I'm out of cards. And instead of stacking things in this awkward way, 600 and then 70 and then three, we just write it as 673. But they were really three different actions. First, we gave everyone 600 cards. Then we gave everyone 70 cards, and then we gave everyone three cards. Can we do a different one now? Yes, can I do this one, this side where I use the bring down notation in case that helps people? Sure. Okay, and then I actually want to um, ask Anna if she needs me to do something that has more of you moving things around because she is here to see how the jam boards work when you are all moving things, but you happen to pick the jam board that has the most of me writing. <laughs> uh, so I'm a little not wanting her to think I'm wasting my time being here. But very quickly. I think it's a great mix, David, of uh, demonstrating and letting folks be in there as well. I had thought about trying to make this particular Jamboard, Anna, more interactive, but um, it is kind of scary to be working on long division in front of your peers. And it is, you know, sometimes it makes you nervous just to suggest things that I write. So I, um, that's why we have the playing cards that they can kind of, the students can do things, but I'm the only one trying to act as a scribe. Okay, so here is this, if you're watching the recording, 
or um, want to come back to this slide later because it's a jam board, it will stay around forever, then you can steer at these two and see what happens when we don't write the zeros and instead write the bring down arrows, but it's really the same thing. Um, there was a line method where you don't have to know your multiplication tables. Should I demonstrate that one also? I wasn't a huge fan of that one. Okay, because if you were here on the second and want me to see it again, some people like having a boxes where you do the same thing we just did, but you write each of these little sections in a box rather than stacked on top of each other. But that one, no one seemed a fan of either. So I don't think I need to record that again. Okay, let's do this one. I'm gonna stop the recording. So it's your turn, but no one is gonna be recorded for posterity. If it's slow or you make a mistake, no one will ever know. But now we have that two digit number in front that Olivia wanted. So it's getting a little more complicated. So I'll stop the recording and turn it over to you.